Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make this loopable animation in Blender. I'm basing this off of one of my own original ones that I made um, a few days ago. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I will be making the blend file available to my Patreons. More, just more information about that in the description below. And if you guys don't want to do that, I really love it when you guys support the channel by subscribing. It means a lot. So let's get into Blender 2.8 and make this really cool loopable scene. Okay, so let's start by opening up a new scene in Blender. We're just going to select the default objects. We're going to go X and delete. Then we're going to go Shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options. We're going to come down here and add in a cylinder. We're going to come down here to our cylinder settings. Just make sure it's set to 32. By default, it should be. Once we've done that, we're going to go into our front view. Then we're going to go R, Y, 9, 0, and we're going to hit Enter. So we've just rotated it 90 degrees on our Y axis here. And if you go to your um, your transform settings here, you can see under the rotation, the Y is 90. So go back to your front view. What we're going to do now is we're going to go Shift A, we're going to get our mesh options, and we're going to add in a cylinder again. But this time we're going to come to the vertices and we're going to give it a count of three. So now we have this triangle here. And then what we're going to do as well, if that guy is selected, is we're going to go R, Y, 9, 0, and we're going to hit Enter. Now this guy is also rotated 90 degrees on the Y axis. Then we're going to go Shift A, we've got our mesh options, we're going to add in a cube. And um, with this cube still selected, we're just going to hit H to hide it for a second. And what we're going to do is select both of these items here. And we're going to go S, 0 0.5, and we're going to hit Enter. So we just made them half their size. So you can see here on the scale, if I select one of them, they're all 0 0.5 on the scale vectors. And the same with the triangle here. So with that done, we're going to hit Alt H just to unhide the cube here with the cube selected. What we're going to do is go into our wireframe here. And we're going to tab into edit mode, and with this cube selected, we're going to go S, Shift, and X. So S, Shift, and X. And we're just going to scale this down like this. And what that's doing is it's limiting the scale of this to... Um, so it's just, if we go S, Shift, and X, essentially what it's doing is just scaling on the Z and the Y axis, and it's not doing it along the X. So we're just going to take it down to about here, so it's just fitting nice and snug within that triangle over here. Okay, so once we've done that, we're just gonna go to our front view again, we're gonna go S, X, and just scale it in so it's just sitting, it's just a little tiny, tiny bit shorter than our triangle there. So it's just sitting nice and tucked in inside of there. So what we have here is this guy here, this triangle, and then this cube. So very straightforward. We're gonna hit A to select all of them, then we're gonna go Control A, and we're just gonna apply the scale. And we're going to go Control A, and we're also just going to apply the rotation. With that done, what we're going to do is um, select both of these. So hold this, select this guy, holding and Shift, select the triangle, and holding and Shift, select this cylinder here. Then we're going to go Control P, and we're going to go Set Parent to Object and keep the transform. So now, if we select this cylinder here and we move it, we're going to see everything else follows along with it. So let's go back to our front view. We're going to go Shift A, go to our Mesh Options, add in a plane. With this plane selected, we're going to go R, Y, 9, 0. We're going to hit Enter. So we've just rotated 90 degrees as well on the Y axis. Go to your Modifiers tab. We're going to give this guy a Boolean. And then what we're going to do is grab this guy here. We're going to go G, X, and we're just going to move it over to the side here for now. Just somewhere here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab this triangle here. We're going to go Shift D X, and we're going to duplicate this and just bring it in here. So it's just sitting, intersecting with this plane. Grab the plane, click, go to the modifiers, get the Boolean modifier, click on the little um, eyedropper here under the object, and select that triangle, and then hit Apply. Select the triangle and go X and Delete. So now we have a hole cut in it, the same size as our triangle. Then we're going to select this cube here, and we're going to Shift D X and just duplicate one and move it along the X to over here. And let's go Shift A, go to our Mesh Options, add in a plane. We're going to go R, Y, 9, 0 one more time. And then we're going to go into our front view. We're going to go G, X, and just move this guy over to about here. So about the, this spacing should be fine. Then we're going to do the same thing. Go to our modifiers. We're going to add in a Boolean. Go to the object, click on the little eyedropper, and select the cube over here, and then apply. And then select this guy and go X and delete. So now we have a hole cut in that. That is the same size as our cube over there. So with that done, I'm going to select this guy, go to the modifiers, add in a solidify. I'm going to make the thickness here 0.1. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to grab this guy here. Holding and shift, I'm going to select this guy again. And then I'm going to go um, control L. 
and we're gonna just give it the same modifier. So come down here and just link the modifiers. So now bo both of them have the exact same solidify modifier with the same setting. So what we're gonna do now is go into our front view and we're gonna select this cylinder over here and we're gonna go just Make sure you hit N to open up your properties panel, go to your item, and we want to come over here to the location transforms. And on the X, we just want to make this um, five meters. So just type in f negative five meters, sorry. So just type in negative five. Hovering over it, we're going to make sure we are on frame one on our timeline. And we're going to hover over here. We're going to hit I to insert the keyframe. Then we're going to come to frame 120. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in five. So now it's moving at five, um, five meters on the X this way in the positive. Hovering over here, we're gonna hit I to insert a keyframe, okay? So what we have here is this. So it's gonna move, come through like this and stop over here. Okay, that's really good. What we also wanna do is just come over here to end frames. We wanna make that 120 frames because that's how long our animation is gonna be. And we also wanna, that cylinder still selected, just click on here, select both of these yellow keyframes. We wanna hit T and we wanna make the interpolation a linear. So now we have a linear animation. Okay, so the rest is also gonna be super easy. What we're gonna do is just come back to frame one. Go shift A, we're gonna to go to our mesh options, just quickly add in a cube. Go to your front view and then what we're gonna do is go to our object properties here. Go down to um, viewport display. We wanna make the display wire under display as, so make it wire. And we also wanna come over here to visibility and it's very important that you disable this here. So we don't want show and render. So just tick that. So when we do eventually render it, this cube will not be visible in the viewport. So that's very important. What we're gonna do then is we're gonna just scale it down a tiny bit. Then we're gonna go G, X, and just move it over here. So this, the front of this is kind of sitting halfway in this plate here, just like that. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's roughly there. Tab into edit mode and then go to face select, select this face over here, go G, X, and move it as far as you want this way, about that far, as long as it's completely out of our camera view once we put in the camera. And then we're gonna come, go shift D, X, and duplicate this guy and bring another one forward and go G, X, just move this guy so it's sitting in the front of this one here, okay? And what we're gonna do, if that guy is still selected, we're gonna go to our, um, click on here, go up here, and we're just gonna name it um, Cube Cutter, and hit Enter. And we're gonna just select this one we made first, and we're just gonna call it Triangle Cutter. Okay, just so we know what we're doing. And what we're gonna do now, is we're just going to select that triangle over here. This, oh no, select the cylinder, okay? So once you've selected the cylinder, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our modifiers tab, add a modifier, and we're gonna add in a Boolean. I'm gonna click on the little eyedropper and we're gonna select that um, triangle cutter right there. So you can see triangle cutter is selected. So if we quickly went through here on animation, we're gonna see that Boolean is gonna be cutting away that triangle. It's gonna give us this illusion that that's being extruded. So now we're simply gonna do, as you've probably already guessed, do the same thing with the cube. Real simple, we're gonna add a Boolean to the cube. Just come over here, click on this, and just go find that um, cube cutter. And now, this is the magic part. It was literally that simple. Now we're gonna play the whole animation and have a look at this. It's gonna look like magic. Okay, so what's going on here? Oh, okay, so I selected the wrong thing here. Um, we actually just go back to frame one. I just made a mistake here. We don't want to give the cube that um, Boolean. So get rid of the Boolean on the cube. Just get rid of it. We want to get this triangle because that's the thing that's getting cut. So with that triangle selected, we're going to go add a Boolean. Click on the object here and just give it that cube cutter. Okay, sorry about that. Just a little mistake, but not a big deal. So let's play that animation. So there we go. And there we go. It's literally that simple. And this is gonna look so cool when it's rendered. One thing we can do is just grab the cylinder, tab into edit mode, and with all of these vertices selected, just hit S and scale it up a tiny little bit just to fix that shading over there. Okay, so let's grab, um, yeah, just with the cylinder as well. Let's just add a bevel to that. So I'm gonna add a bevel. I'm gonna come to the limit method here, make it angle, and let's just come to the offset and just decrease it and make it really small and give the segment a count of three. Go to object and enable shade smooth. This is gonna make that look a little bit better. And let's just go and do the same thing to the triangle here. 
select it, give it a bevel, make the limit method angle and bring down the offset quite a bit and give it some more segments and do the same thing with the cube here. It's just gonna make things look a little bit nicer in our render. Give the cube a bevel, come to limit method, make it angle and bring that offset amount down and give it some more segments. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Okay, that is just looking really awesome. So let's add in a camera. So we're gonna come over here. So if you're in your front, just move over to the top here and we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a camera. Go to your camera settings, make it orthographic over here in the camera settings. And what we're gonna do is go to output settings. We're gonna make the Y resolution under the dimensions 1920 as well. And to make my render a bit faster, I'm just gonna make the percentage 70 for now as well. So let's hit zero with that camera selected to go into camera view. With that camera selected, if you hit G and you hold in your middle mouse button and you pull back, um, okay, you can't actually zoom out this way. But what we can do is go to our, um, just move your camera out here like that. Just move it out here. And what we can do now is just hit G in your camera view to move your camera. So we're just gonna get a view like this. And if you wanna zoom in and out, you can come to your camera settings here and you can just mess around with this orthographic scale. So just get something that looks roughly like what I've got here. Should be just fine. Then we're gonna go Shift A, go to your mesh options, add in a plane, scale it up just so it fills in the background. Go G, Z, just bring it down. So you want it sitting just underneath here like that. Go to your front view, go into wireframe, we're gonna go Shift A, add in a cylinder. Make sure this time you bump it up to 16. Then we're gonna go S to scale it down quite a bit. G, and we're gonna move it over here under this first plate. Tap into edit mode, go to your, select this bottom face, and we're gonna go G, Z, and just bring that down into our floor. Okay, go to object, enable shade smooth. Then we're gonna go shift D, X, and just move this guy over here and give this guy one of these little poles as well. So now we have this. We can also select the floor here, tap into edit mode, go to edge select, Hovering over here, we can go Control R, that's gonna add in the loop, and if we roll our middle mouse wheel, we can roll in some more loop cuts. So we add about this many, and then we're gonna go Control B again, and to add in a bevel, we're gonna add in a bevel on all of them like that. And then with those selected, we're gonna go E, Z, and just extrude them down. So now we have some more detail there. And you can also um, go to Object, Enable Shade Smooth. That's gonna create some really funky shading because there's not enough detail in this, but really I kind of like it. It kind of gives this weird effect. So I'm gonna, that's what I went with with my scene. But um, you can see here, this is what we have so far. So if we quickly play that, this is our scene. And another thing you can do that's real easy, is just go to frame one, All right? So make sure you're on frame one and we can grab this cylinder here. We can go shift D to duplicate it. Then we can go G, X and just move it back here. And just scale it down and go to your wireframe and if you scale it down big enough that it's a little bit smaller than the cube there, right? What we're gonna do is do that. Go G, X, make sure it's butted up right against the cylinder. And then we're gonna come over here to the key, keyframes and just select the keyframes. We're gonna go X and delete the keyframes because we don't need keyframes on this one. Tab into edit mode and go to face select. Select this face over here. Go G, X, just move it in a little bit, then go E to extrude, S to scale, scale it in a bit, and then go E to extrude it. And we're just extruding out this rod like this. Tab out of edit mode. And now, let's have a look at that. Okay, just go back to frame one. Sorry, go back to frame one, select this guy, holding in shift, select the cylinder, then go control P and go to object, keep transform. So now this guy is gonna follow along this animated cylinder. So let's play that. So now we have this pusher rod. Oh yeah, and also with the pusher rod, just select it, go to your modifiers, and just get rid of that Boolean because we duplicated it originally from that um, cylinder. So now that should all work perfectly when we play our animation. And what we can also do, and to make this loopable, and I didn't actually think about this part, um, we can just add another 20 frames here. So just make it 140. And what we can do is um, just grab this guy, the rod, go back to frame one. If you wanted to make it loopable, what we could do is go Alt P and we can go to clear parent. And then what we can do is we can go I and we can insert a location key. 
then play this out till our um, little thing here comes to a stop, which is at frame 120. Then we can go G, X, move this guy out to here. It's just so it's butted up against that guy there. And we can go I, insert a key keyframe for a location. And then we can select both of these keyframes, hit T and make it linear as well. So now we should have this. If we play it, it should push it in like that. And then what we can do is from frame 120 to frame 140, we can bring it back. So it comes to frame 140 and we can go G, X and just move this guy all the way back here and go I and insert a location key. So now it should be loopable. You don't have to do that part, it's optional. So just fixing that mistake and then it comes back and then the whole thing can repeat. So now we've done our animation. The next part is going to be our lightings and our materials. Okay, so the lighting and materials pretty straightforward. Let's go to our render settings. So click on the little camera and then go make sure your render engine is set to EV. Go down, enable ambient occlusion and enable screen space reflections. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go shift A, add in a light, go to our area light, add that in. G, Z, move it up in the scene. Just keeping it real basic here of the lighting. Go to your light settings, increase the power to 800. Um, if it's too much, decrease it. If it's too little, increase it. Um, this is quite a large scene, so you probably end up needing somewhere between 800 and 1000 for this amount here. Go to the size and just increase it to about four meters. And then if you go Z, rendered, we should see this. You can also go Shift D to duplicate your light, to make another one. Kind of rotate it in a little bit here. Shift D, make another one. Rotate it in from this side. So it's just like a three point lighting setup. Very basic, go into your camera. And now what we can do is go to our shading. Oh yeah, just go back into your camera here. Hit Z, go rendered. And let's start by adding a material to this floor. So I'm gonna select this floor, then I'm gonna go new. And I'm just gonna try and match it up as close to my original scene, but I'm not gonna add as much detail. So let's just kind of go with a kind of purplish kind of dark purple, something like this. This is kind of what I went with. Make it fully metallic. And then you can mess around with this roughness amount. I really like how that um, shading on this is kind of, it's not really good shading. Like you wouldn't want that on most models, but it just looks really cool, um, the effect you're getting here. So I really like that. Once you're done with that, we're gonna select one of these plates, go new. And let's just call this material plate. It's always a good idea, idea to name materials. And we're gonna make this kind of like a dark purple like this. Also make it metallic and then bring down that roughness. Maybe make it a little less dark. Then we're gonna select this plate. We're gonna go down, give it that same plate material. And we're gonna select both of these guys at the bottom and give them that same material as well. That plate material. Once we're done with that, we're gonna select this um, cylinder we're gonna go new, this is called this soft material. And what we're gonna do is make it a nice kind of lime green, make the subsurf value 0.1 and give it a peachy color here in the subsurf color. Like that, then select the triangle, give it that same soft material, select our cube here and give it that same soft material. Then what we're gonna do is select this little rod here. We're gonna go new, and this guy, we're gonna give a nice orange material. Let's just call it rod. And then we're gonna come over here, give it a metallic value of one. And then we can just bring that roughness down just a tad bit. So there we have our materials. And now let's go to our layout. Let's click on this little output tab here. And if we wanna render this out, go to your output settings, click on the little folder, just select your desktop or wherever. I'm gonna select my desktop. And then go to file format, make it an FFmpeg, go to the encoding, and let's make it an MP4peg. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to render and we're gonna render this animation and we're gonna see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the render, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you made this, share it on Instagram, show other people what you've made. In fact, try and make it even better than I made it. Like I have to sometimes keep these tutorials quite limited and short because of time constraints. Um, like I said, I will be making this blend file available to my Patreons. More information about that in the description below. It's also a great way to support the channel besides just liking and subscribing. I really do appreciate what you guys do. Um, yeah, next time.